Hi everybody, Trisha here with the Virtual Foundry talking with you today about sintering powders. Now if you've looked into the Virtual Foundry's FFF Metal 3D printing process, you've seen that to debind and sinter parts printed with filament, you'll bury your print in a refractory ballast and then cover that with sintering carbon. Now let's talk through those one by one, what they are, when you use them, and how they help. Now the sintering powders all come to you in a jar packed in a box like this and they include two different groups refractory ballast and sintering carbon. So let's talk about refractory ballast first. The purpose of these materials is to support the part shape during debinding and sintering and it also helps the binder leave the print during debinding. AL203 is used during debind for copper and for bronze. Now properties that make it great for this process are that it's porous so gases can escape. It's an excellent conductor of heat which helps distribute heat evenly around the part during debind and it's quite massive by volume. A key flaw that people experience during debind is pillowing. Now this is when prints partially delaminate during the debind process. They will literally look puffed up or inflated. By burying the print in AL203, its weight will hold the print in place and prevent that pillowing. You can also overcome pillowing by debinding very, very slowly. However, burying in that AL203 lets you debind many times faster. Magnesium silicate is used during sintering for copper and bronze. Now, this material works great for this process because it's very lightweight and has high lubricity. As the print is shrinking and densifying, the ballast will move out of its way, letting it shrink without causing cracks. The copper alloys are strong enough after debind that you can handle them. They're held together by an atomically thin layer of oxide that reduces during the sinter cycle. Our published recipe has you remove the print from the AL203 ballast and move it to a crucible with magnesium silicate ballast for the sintering portion. Moving your part from one ballast to another takes most of the residual carbon from the debind out of your process. In fact, if you don't do this step with the copper alloys, the sinter is more likely to fail. The part may come out crumbly and black or only with the outside wall sintered properly. So with non-steel, it's the act of removing the part from the AL203 that removes that residual carbon from your sinter process. Steel blend is used for debinding and sintering steel and iron. Now, part of the challenge with the steels is that it's impossible to handle a brown steel or iron part. Once you remove the binder, the part has no structural integrity. If you touch it, it will just crumble. The current operating hypothesis is that the graphite that's added to the AL203 in the steel blend prevents the residual carbon in the debind stage from accumulating around the part. While both pure carbon and graphite are allotropes of the same element, they behave very differently chemically. So the reason that steel blend lets you debind and sinter in a single step is that graphite. If you try to sinter steel in just AL203, you will sometimes succeed, but other times you will get the same symptom as the copper alloys if you don't swap the binder. They will look, they will either be black and crumbly or only the outside layers will sinter. Furthermore, the graphite adds lubricity to the ballast, which helps it yield to your part as it shrinks and densifies. Sintering carbon acts as an oxygen getter during the sintering process and prevents oxygen from reaching your print and oxidizing it. You'll apply a layer to the top of your packed crucible. Now the print and sinter kits in the Virtual Foundry Shop ensure you're getting the right sintering powders for your filament material. Now, can the sintering powders be reused? Yes, they can. 
The refractory ballasts will change color over time, so they should be refreshed after many cycles. The graphite in the steel blend will slowly disappear, so either replenish the graphite or begin again with fresh steel blend. Use fresh ballast anytime you want to reduce the variables in your process. Any amount of sintering carbon that comes out of the sintering cycle looking fully black like it started can be filtered out and reused. The sintering carbon will eventually be used up. It is meant to be consumed. Slow the rate of consumption by covering your crucible with kiln paper, a ceramic plate, or any other kind of lid. Now be sure your cover doesn't create a seal. Air must still be able to move around. We have a video that gives more information about reusing the sintering powders. I'll link that in this video and in the description here. Now, can alternative powders be used? Yes, just look for materials with the same properties as those that I spoke about here and make sure they will not be affected by the temperatures that you'll be using. Now you can find all of this information on our website in the blog section and there'll be a link to that in this video description as well. And as always, write to us at info at thevirtualfoundry.com with any questions about any part of the process as you work on making your own beautiful FFF metal 3D printed parts. Thanks everybody, happy printing. AL203 is used during debind for a key. They will literally, literally, by burying the print in 